Oh, you know what time it is. It's time for the NFL draft. And that means the fantasy footballers got to put something on the line and make some draft predictions. Check out where we think the star players are going to land and a little bit of mailbag. Stay tuned. Unless one has an affinity for looking ridiculously foolish, it is wise not to stumble aimlessly into a fantasy football draft. The Ultimate Draft Kit from the Fantasy Footballers contains all the information you need to avoid the jeers of your enemies and to snuff out any glint of hope in their souls. Imagine the gasps those trouser-wearing turnips will emit as you make yet another triumphant draft selection. Imagine their tears forming a formidable puddle as you assemble an unstoppable force. The Ultimate Draft Kit comes bursting at the seams with fantasy goodness. When you enter the draft room, you'll feel as if you were a monstrous beast let loose in a chicken coop. Head over to UltimateDraftKit.com today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh. It's draft day time, yeah. baby. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> oh, Thursday, draft day, April 29th, 2021. From the serene chirps of those birds that we heard at the open to the excited growls of Jason and yes. dulcet tones of Mr. Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? <laughs> Welcome in to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers. We are so excited. It's draft day for the NFL, which means draft day, draft day, we're draft going to be day, making our draft predictions. Draft day. On today's show, there will be some high stakes involved. Stakes? Not stakes, Jason. Oh, man. <laughs> high stakes. Do we, there could be. I mean, we could have yeah. you guys buy me a steak dinner. When we did do that. My picks come flowing in correctly. Yeah. Yeah, we could. And I I can barely even glance to my right towards Jason today because this, this is like a, shining. a burst of light. I'm a bright man today. I'm wearing... Not black, as we call it. <laughs> not black. <laughs> this shirt is not yeah. black. Wait, uh, this is a shout out to Marlon DeFilo. DeFilo? DeFilo? You know who you are. You think we don't read the YouTube comments? <laughs> I hear uh, he said he'll buy 10 UDKs for 10 people if uh, I don't wear black on the next show. So here I am. Marlon, bright orange. You better pay up. Do you have Should to buy that right before the show? Do you have I, any? I. This was one I had in my closet. I've got two. Two, <laughs> two non -black shirts. shirts. What's your other shirts one? Shirts in my closet. I've got a uh, light gray. Ooh, a light gray. Sun's out, guns out. Gotcha. I mean, this is a bright orange spitballer shirt you have on today. So this is different. We we do know from pickleball that Jason owns a tank top. Yeah, that's the gray one. <laughs> that's, oh, that's, that's the one. That's, that's, <laughs> sun's out, guns out, man. <laughs> or as I say, sun's out, sourdough loaves out. <laughs> You do call your arms your loaves. Yeah, well, right now they're loaves of bread. But I'm going to work on that someday, and then, you know, the, the guns will be shooting. Wonder bread. Uh, well, you, Wonder bread. Hey, head over to YouTube.com oh. slash The Fantasy Footballer. Subscribe, click the bell. We're going live on Friday with our reactions from, uh, from the first round of the NFL draft. It'll be right before the second and third round. Um, very, very excited about that. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness! Twitter at the FF Ballers. It's a happy day around very, here. Very. From time to time, when we're you know we're busy, we're concentrating, we're doing, we're trying to bring you a quality production here, and the producers they have no regard for that whatsoever. No, especially Al Borland, who will just mercilessly slack things that are I just possibly I can't repeat them on the show. So, <laughs> um, but that's his role here. At the company. Uh, you can find us Twitter at the FF Ballers. Like I said, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. The big news, we yeah. said it on Tuesday. Uh, the Ballers, this is Ultimate Draft Week, which means that if you get the Ultimate Draft Kit or the UDK Plus before the NFL draft is over, you Actually, are. Actually, through Sunday. 
So Correct. even we're That's true. we're doing all day Sunday don't, as well. Don't tell them that. Well, That's I a little Easter egg. I want them to know. Okay. I uh, so before May second, which is Jason's birthday. That's true. Uh, you are entered to win. If you get it before then, you're entered to win the ultimate draft week prize pack. We're giving away a listener league spot. Mm -hmm. There are not a lot of those. So no. this is one of the big giveaways of the off season, a video draft review, uh, with the three of us. So we'll look at your team. We'll break it down after your draft and then, uh, send you on to glory. And then we've got a signed Devonte Adams Jersey and a signed Clyde Edwards, Alaire Jersey. We're giving away as well. And if you've already pre-ordered, any time since we put the pre-orders up in February, uh, you are automatically entered for that. So don't fear. You're not missing out on anything. But you will miss out if you don't order by this Sunday. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimatedraftkit.com. And like I said, we'll be live as well on Friday with some draft reactions. Got predictions on today's show as well. But first, some buy-sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Uh, the Buy or Sell today, Daniel Jones, 35 total touchdowns in 2021. Oh, my. I have such strong opinions here that I will wait to, d to, to put them out there into the universe. Well, buy or sell 35 total touchdowns. You are a certified Daniel Jones sell. hater. Sell it. <laughs> we know where you're going. I well, I'm more I'm irritated because uh, I don't know. Brooks, did you put this question in here or was this Kyle? This one technically it was Kyle. Te so, okay, te technically put I, the blame on him. He but makes he, he ran it by me as well. Well, no, the the, the question's fine. Uh, I am a super sell on 35 total touchdowns for Daniel Jones. The reason that I am passionate about this is because he chose to highlight in a yellow highlight. You know, in his rookie year. Daniel Jones had 26 total touchdowns in 12 starts. His 17-game pace would be 37 total touchdowns. More often than not, quarterbacks don't wake up the next day and become great quarterbacks. More often than not, when they put successive seasons where they decline together in a row, they don't become superstars. And last year, Daniel Jones dealt with injury. He basically threw an interception every time he threw a touchdown last season. I am not betting on a miracle of sure, Daniel Jones coming to fruition. You're not betting on 36 interceptions? No. Hey, wait, look, if, <laughs> if, if they give him the kind of Jameis Winston uh, rope that um, th that they had to deal with Bruce Arians in Tampa, maybe he can get to 36-36 on the season. But he fumbles like crazy. That's true. He looked worse last year than he did the year before. That's true. Uh, he Yes, he can run the football. Who cares? This guy is on a thin, thin... Uh, sheet of ice this season. So I am personally not projecting somebody to go and become something he's not. Yeah, look, I I I like Daniel Jones for fantasy this season. I think he's going to run the ball. I think he's going to have several rushing touchdowns and his passing touchdown number should go north. With Kenny Galladay on the team, they could very well still draft another good wide receiver. Uh, I think it allows Sterling Shepard to play to his strengths and and allows Darius Slayton to play to his strengths. So I, I could see a world where um, this does happen. But if we're putting the odds and the projections out there, I would sell. This is a, this is a high line for someone that we have not seen, to my eyeballs, look like a great quarterback. I hope that the New York Giants offense can get it together. I think they can. But if I have to project, are they for sure going to be? I've got to, I've got to put my twenty dollars down on the over or the under. I'm, I'm going under that line. What if the line is thirty total touchdowns? Yeah, I think, I think that's where I would, I would buy. Okay. I would buy that because I, I think you know, uh, I could see him having four to six rushing touchdowns. So you're not talking about an outlandish passing touchdown, especially number. with seventeen games. Yeah, seventeen games helps. Yeah, I'm, I'm selling the thirty-five, but I'm with you, Jay. If, if, if it were thirty. I would buy it. Kenny Galladay is Kenny Galladay himself is worth a lot of touchdowns to the passing game. And if you looking at, I don't think Daniel Jones is his rookie year. What five point two percent of his attempts turn into a touchdown? But he is definitely not two and a half. Like that is that is atrocious. That is so far below the league average. And Daniel Jones to me is a league average quarterback. Galladay. The return of Saquon Barkley. This team will be better on the offensive side of the ball. It 
I'm not I wouldn't I'm not throwing the towel in on Daniel Jones just yet having a terrible sophomore year. I agree. That, I threw it in. Mike you caught did. it right before it landed, and he's holding it for and, a, a season. But not, I'm not like I'm not twisting, throwing it above my head like a <laughs> helicopter. I, I'm just you hold it. You hold yes. it south for me. I'll just I'll just gently put it on my knee in case I have to toss it on. If the it ground. goes south, you just drop yeah. it. <laughs> you know I'm ready to bail. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but I'm not bailing yet. You know what's crazy to me, and I, I've I've had this thought through this entire off season. Um, this is a great quarterback draft class. We're, we're about to get into where we think they're going to land. A lot of teams wanting to trade up. A lot of people thinking quarterback X, Y, or Z could, could slip a little bit. The New York Giants have the 11th pick in this draft. Like, they are clearly not interested in quarterback, not tied to them, not looking. Why not? Like, you had a – starting at the 11, they had a it's good me, chance. It's me, Dave. It's me, Dave Gallman. <laughs> Um, I mean, why I, not? I, I, it is why not. It's because Dave He's drafted been blocking the, towels that are flying uh, in. He drafted his guy, but it's like, man, you had an option this year with everything that you have at your disposal to get up a few picks and grab one of these good quarterbacks. I, I feel like I maybe came on really strong. The, the point I'm simply making is that look, if a player like Carson Wentz, who was an MVP candidate, shows decline in his gameplay over seasons. I'm not going to bet it's, on it's it. It's not seasons, though. We have two years of Daniel Jones. But that Okay, you have two years of Daniel Jones that have not gone in the right direction. You may point out that his touchdown percentage is pretty low compared to a league average. He could play half the season, and they could pull him. I yes, mean, that's, that's true. That's the point where we're at with Daniel Jones, where if he goes on another fumble interception escapade like he so enjoys, we could be – Looking but, at something different. I'll say the the fumbling is one hundred percent a problem. I won't argue, but his rookie year, he was he was at a two to one ratio. He threw twenty four touchdowns and only twelve interceptions. Why he, didn't he get better, Mike? The the team got worse. Yeah. I mean, the team did not help Daniel Jones at all last year. Well, this will be make or break year for Daniel Jones. If he has a it, an yes. improvement, then he's the future, maybe, and we'll see. Uh, that was buy yourself from our friends at Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. Lots of great stuff over there. Uh, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Well, Antonio Brown is going back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. One-year deal. Returns with uh, Mr. Brady. And, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I figured Antonio Brown would land. Yeah, it's 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 a good spot. Run it back. Go for another championship. Uh, I saw a a tweet from uh, Heath Cummings over at CBS, and he tweeted out something that was fascinating to me that I guess I just I hadn't really thought about. But he's like, I just learned that Antonio Brown led the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in uh, receptions on a per game basis. It was like once AB showed up, he was important. Now I know Chris Godwin was hurt. But and Antonio Brown was more important to this offense, I think, than we actually realize. It's interesting. I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah. The Broncos have acquired quarterback Teddy Bridgewater from the Panthers in exchange for a 2021 six-round pick. He is now a Denver Bronco. And Carolina is still paying the majority of his salary. Like, this was a sensational trade by the Denver Broncos. They – you have to he at least hedge on on Drew Locke. Because well, they got twice as good now. I mean, they didn't <laughs> yeah. hedge. They they. I mean, don't get me wrong. Teddy Bridgewater's not that good, but he's you know he's now their best quarterback on the roster. My point is, there the, the Broncos are as a team should be excellent. They are a quarterback away from really competing. They have a tough division now. They still have a quarterback away, but though. but. The quarterback could be upgraded, and it, this still doesn't stop them from drafting a player. Just mean Carolinas, the are they in the game for a quarterback? I One. don't believe they are personally. I mean, I, I do. I mean, this trade to me says, well, we can get some value for Teddy Bridgewater, and we're in the game for and, somebody to compete with Sam Darnold. Yeah, they they didn't pick up the fifth year on Darnold, not yet. Not They're yet. not going to, I think, until after the draft, right? Correct. So okay. They, uh, I. One of the quarterbacks, so spoiler alert, I have one of the quarterbacks going to the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly could happen. In it my, will in, happen, Jason. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think it will happen the way that you have it going because I have a feeling you're not having Justin Fields drop to there. From what I understand, the Carolina Panthers, that's the I, I think that that's the player that they would 
probably want if they're targeting someone. I just don't think that that will happen. I'm so excited to go through these picks, though, and say how we think it's going to gonna unfold. Well, let's do that now. I want to play a game. Oh, it's going to be fun, and the shelf life on this show, a little bit shorter. Very small. A little bit shorter. Very because oh, we gotta- no, no, no. This will be a super fun show to listen to one day after and see how stupid <laughs> we all are. Well, let's just make sure that we are all extremely confident in our selections. I'm positive that will make mine are it- 100% right. Uh, we always put something on the line. Now, I, I pulled Twitter for some ideas on a bet, and the one we went with, was uh, <laughs> the loser, whoever gets the least amount of predictions correct, uh, their glamour shot is going up <laughs> on the back of this <laughs> wall where our player jersey normally is. Now, the winners get to pick the pose and the outfit, You right? betcha. Gonna, oh, yeah. We're going to do some work here. And uh, for the first time ever on our draft prediction show, we don't even know who one another has picked because they are hidden. Uh, from our eyes. So normally we at least know which direction somebody's going. We may all agree on somebody. I can't wait to reveal where I think Trevor Lawrence is going. Oh, Mike, let oh. me know. <laughs> I'm blowing my draft up from the first pick. Well, we all, I, I hate to break it to you. I do know where Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson are on our predictions. We all have them the exact same. Yes. Trevor Lawrence to Jacksonville and Zach Wilson to the Jets. So we're we are not start disagreeing off there. 2-0. Oh. <laughs> yes. Th- those are the bits of news I guess not Lawrence. We knew Lawrence would go one, but I am allowing the media to influence me and say that Zach Wilson is locked into two. But let's begin now with our draft predictions, and I do not know if we'll be very similar or very different. I feel like mine are a little bit uh, off chalk, I guess you would say. Off? Not off. (laughs) Off. Off chalk. It's a hard. I was combining them. Yes. Oh, I see. Um, I will let you reveal your own when I bring the player up. I'm going with Justin Fields, and I am going with the Atlanta Falcons. Oh, I, I believe that there will be four quarterbacks off the board, one through four. There is the chance that Atlanta trades down to enable that to happen. I, however, believe that they will view this as an opportunity to grab their next quarterback in the rare occasion that they're at the top of the draft. And uh, so I'm going to go Justin Fields with the Atlanta Falcons at four, okay. which is which is I think uh, I'll be alone in that. All right, Mike, where do you have Justin Fields going? I have decided to stick with the guns. I think he is at l- at least the second best quarterback in this draft. I don't want to just drum pull out a flamethrower, but Justin Fields to me could be the best quarterback in this draft class better than Trevor Lawrence he's going to be an outstanding pro and how do you pass on him when he drops to you at number three the, I'm blocking the all the coach speak all the smoke screens that have been going on and I this I is think, a glory pick here I think San Francisco moved up for Justin Fields that makes uh that makes sense because I I you know obviously what do we know but I am in agreement with you that he if if I'm the New York Jets, my pick would be Justin Fields. Yes. Um if I'm the San Francisco 49ers, my pick would be Justin Fields if he's there. But I'm trying to get these right. I think Justin Fields slips a little bit from what we've seen, and I have a team coming to trade up oh, to man. get Justin Fields, the New England Patriots. What Justin a- Justin Fields and Cam Newton are uh close. And, uh, you know, we, Andy, you've said uh, since the time you started scouting Justin Fields, all you see is like a mini Cam Newton out there. They, they both wear the same number. They have the same stance, the same throwing motion. But I, uh, I think that the Patriots want that type of a player. So they come up into the top ten to get him? I have them trading with the Carolina Panthers uh, okay. and, that, and that they move back. What a freaking gift for Bill Belichick. Maybe. If this happened, yeah, no, it, it's this is not a maybe. If Fields went to the Patriots, because I'm I'm locked. Fields is going to be good, but to go, you just have one down year, and then you have someone who can be your franchise quarterback. Well, maybe. I mean, do you do you read into any of the concerns with him managing the epilepsy and things of that nature? I don't. There's, you, you think teams when they think about what they'd have to invest to come up and get a guy though might factor that in? They, oh, it's it's probably factored in. Uh, I. Don't don't pretend that I'm a doctor of knowing like what degree uh, of epilepsy does he have. But we know there are other NFL players 
who have had this and managed it. And uh, I believe I had read that it's uh, in his family, this is not uncommon, and in his family, people have outgrown it. Sure, sure. All right. I uh, was told I would outgrow my asthma, though, and that did, didn't work out. That did not work out. Uh, oh, all right. Trey Lance is up next. Trey Lance is up next. Before we get to him, I, I want to I want to genuinely thank this sponsor, Helix Sleep, because we we all three yep have Helix mattresses. And here's the cool thing: I don't know if you I don't know if people know this. I don't know how many people need to hear this. I needed to know it. I need to hear it. I took their quiz. I we all three took their quiz to g get the exact mattress that's right for us if we're back sleep or for sleep hot or whatever. Well, it turns out they have a plus size mattress option, and that's but look, uh, look, give the people what they give need. the people what they need, and I need I want a soft mattress, right? But if it's a just a generic soft mattress, and I'm let's just say overweight, what then? What then? I'm sleeping on something that's gonna hurt my back, and I've got it. I've slept on it. I've used it, and I absolutely love love the Helix mattress. You can take their quiz. It takes two minutes. It's very specific to you, your partner. If you're sleeping with two people on a bed, they are going to match you with the mattress that makes the absolute most sense, and you don't have to take our word for it. They were awarded the number one best overall mattress in 2020 by both GQ and Wired Magazine. They're offering up to $200 off all mattresses and two free pillows for our listeners. So go to helixsleep.com slash footballers. That's helixsleep.com slash footballers for up to $200 off and two free pillows. You'll love them. And we want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring today's show. Ladies and gentlemen, Manscaped, long-term uh, supporter of this podcast. And they have the absolute best body trimmer on the market, the Lawnmower 3.0. It's got a ceramic blade and skin-safe technology that makes nicks and snags a thing of the past. And look. When you're t when you're taking care of your body, you don't want to have that problem. They also and they have they have grooming uh, grooming tools for every area that you need. Nose hair, ears hair. They just they they pulled. Seventy nine percent of partners have admitted that long nose hairs are a major turnoff because that means thirty yeah, percent yeah. of partners are lying. Lying. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> because nose hair are the worst. Uh, the the weed whacker nose and ears hair trimmer is the solution. And if you check this out, they have the performance package that comes with the lawnmower 3.0, the nose trimmer, some boxer briefs, a travel bag. They have everything you need to take care of your body. And for a limited time, our listeners can get not one, but two free gifts. You can get the shed travel bag and the patented high performance anti chafing boxer briefs if you use our code and get 20% off of free shipping with the code footballers at manscaped.com. Com. Go uh, get the 20% off and free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS at MANSCAPED.COM. That's 20% off with free shipping at MANSCAPED.COM. Use the code FOOTBALLERS. Take care of yourself. All right. Justin Fields, we all went a different direction. I have him to Atlanta, and uh, Jason went with the Patriots. Mike with San Francisco. Let's move on to Trey Lance. Trey Lance, uh, look, we, we all, I know, spent some time going back and forth on some of these selections. I feel like Jason was very labor intensive on his prediction process, but I ended up going with San Francisco. I think, uh, okay. oh, I, think Trey Lance, okay. I think Trey Lance goes off the board at number three. So you I moved off of Mac. I think it. I've moved off of Mac to Trey Lance. I think that there is more smoke in that direction right now. And there are those out there that believe Trey Lance will be the next Josh Allen in the NFL. Oh. So yeah, there's not just smoke. In San Francisco, this is like a this is a forest fire yeah. situation where I, they're so blocking. I, I've made the switch. They're blocking everything. Yeah, I mean uh, the the reality is most of the plugged in insiders are saying Mac Jones, um, and I I can see that happen happening. I won't be surprised, but at the same time, I'll be shocked from a football standpoint because giving up what they gave up to go from Jimmy Garoppolo to Mac Jones. I just can't make that make sense to me. I feel like there's got to be something that is clearly different, clearly better. Um, and so I also have Trey Lance going to San Francisco. I think All they're right. looking for someone with a rocket arm and legs that can get out and scramble. All you got to do is get that screen pass quickly to Debo, quickly to Ayuk, roll out. Um, honestly, while I don't think Trey Lance is the best prospect, I think if he goes to Kyle Shanahan in that system, 
He's actually going to be great. He he would yeah. be my number one fantasy quarterback. Like if the draft goes the way that I've got the draft going, I would draft Trey Lance ahead of any of the other quarterbacks personally. All right, Mike. Is it? Uh, I know it's not three for three here. It is. It is not because you know San Justin Francisco Fields. already has their quarterback. Uh, and then I think that moving down from after the number three position, those other teams are going to stay where they are and just take the the best player that they want. And then that. And the tumble stops. The stumbles, it's the tumble. The tumble, stops the stumble, at number eight. And the Carolina Panthers take Trey Lance. He seems to be more in the mold of the type of quarterback uh, that they would want. And for that type of that Matt Ja Rule offense, you know, uh. I, I think that Trey Lance could really excel there. And they they take their franchise guy, and Sam Darnold gets a year. I mean, Trey Lance yeah. uh, of the quarterbacks, Trey Lance is. Most developmental. The most developmental that seems the least pro ready, at least has, you know, the least amount of uh, of experience, especially at, when you factor in his competition. So giving Lance a year to sit would be optimal, and and with the trade for Darnold, I think they can do that. All right, let's move on to our final quarterback that we'll be predicting today, Mac Jones. I believe he tumbles to the New England Patriots. I think mm. New England ends up with him, and I don't think they have to move to get him. I think he ends up at sixteen. They might have to okay. move up a few picks. Uh, some other teams threaten, and they come up uh, to 12-13, but I'm going to go with the New England Patriots for Mac Jones. I had Mac Jones going to the New England Patriots for quite a while. Um, I, I think that they would prefer the mobile rushing quarterback, um, but I know a team that is really hot on Mac Jones and is desperate wow. for a quarterback is the Chicago Bears. I have them trading up to say, sorry, Andy Dalton, you're no Mac Jones. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've seen some mocks where Mac falls right to the Chicago pick without them trading up. Sure. Man. Mike? Wild. Uh, I have – I keep it, him inside the top ten, and the very next pick after Trey Lance goes off the board, the Denver Broncos, despite trading for Teddy Bridgewater, they know they have to find a solution. And I, I got him taking Mac Jones. I can see it. Taking the shot. Yeah, I don't think the trade for Bridgewater takes quarterback uh, no. off the board for them. Definitely not. All right. Three big running backs that we're going to predict. Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, and Javante Williams. Let's begin with Najee Harris. Let's uh, handle Mike's man crush here. Oh, man. Bucky Brooks, I besmirched your Justin Fields takes a little bit ago. But if your take on Arizona getting Najee Harris comes true. You'll be okay with it. Oh, oh brother. It's so, oh, brother. It's so funny because the, it's such a – you're torn, right? Because – yep. We know that yep. drafting a first-round running back is not usually a efficient, effective, smart use of your capital. It's not that important of a position compared to other first-round options. Right. And so you're like, oh, if they do it, that would be terrible. But it's like, oh, man, I'd be so excited, see, I, though. I think that you, I think you will see three running backs off the board in the first round. Ooh, oh, I got, man. I got two And, and one of the reasons is because of the fact that there is there's only three that teams will look at as difference makers. And if you draft him in the first round, you get a fifth-year option. If you get the fifth-year option on the player, you let them walk after that, and your running back is cheap. Your running back is cheap for five years, and you believe that they're difference makers. So I think there will be a competitive sense of what's at the top of the draft. Najee Harris, though, believe it or not, I think he's the third running back off the board. And I'm taking – You're crazy. Pittsburgh takes Najee Harris in the – What? In the 20s. So – Wait a minute. No. So that means – I'm fine with Pittsburgh. Yeah. You have two other running backs going before pick 24. That's hot. I know. That's a spicy take. Spicy. I know. I told you I was competing for that glamour shot. Uh, <laughs> here's, here's what's funny. I have Najee Harris being the first running back off the board, but just a few picks ahead of this. I think it's going to be whoever picks first between Miami and Pittsburgh. And Miami picks first, uh, you know, and I'm speaking of not their early pick, but uh, at 18. So I have the Miami Dolphins adding Najee Harris. I know last year there's all the talk about they wanted J.K. Dobbins so bad. They were on mm -hmm. the phone um, with him when right ahead of them he went to the Baltimore Ravens. And so uh, they, they're they not going to play around. They're not going to play around. They're going to take their guy. All right. Well, pass me over the mock draft chalk because I'm just gobbling it down. I'm sending Najee to Pittsburgh as well. Okay. All right. Najee to as Pittsburgh. As the first running back off the board. 
Yeah, you're not Maybe. gonna you're not gonna know. like the way any of this stuff goes from here on out, Mike. Travis Etienne out of Clemson. Oh, don't get out of here with the. Are you buying that nonsense? I have Travis Etienne going to the Washington football team. That's garbage. Wow. That's garbage. That's, wow. that's why you've been hating on Gibson lately. Well, trying to I, set this up. You know, I, I mentioned I mentioned Gibson on the show. Is I believe that the philosophical viewpoint of this team is that Etienne fits it. He fits the mold. He can catch the football. Uh, the things that J.D. McKissick brought to the offense, the fact that Antonio Gibson got injured at the end of the year, that he's so young, that he's still developmental, I, I believe that they're going to make their push. They need more depth at the position, and Etienne represents somebody that they're not going to pass on, and Mike will pass on. Yes. Oh, Mike will I'll pass be gone. on. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Oh, I apologize man. to you, but that would be ahead of Najee Harris. Well, the two good, good if, news. Glamour shot looking more and more <laughs> like it's happening to Andy. <laughs> if, uh, if Trey Lance goes at three over Justin Fields and then uh, Etienne goes to the Washington football team, this will for sure be a two-man show. <laughs> For forever, <laughs> um, I'm I, I've got Travis Etienne uh, going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I think they're they're looking for a first round running back, and uh, Najee's off my board at this point. He's going to the Jets. Okay, you've He's got going the, Jets. To the Jets. So it, he, I, I was just trying to defend Harris of him being the first running back. So if the Jets take him at twenty three, then then ETN would be the first RB off the board. Yeah, and obviously the big surprise then, if I said three are going off the board in the first round, is that Javante Williams will go, and I have him going to the Jets, the Jets that you just mentioned. Okay. So that would be, if the draft board stands as it will, or as it does today, that would be a pick ahead of Pittsburgh. Correct. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. I have Javante making it all the way to the middle of the second round to the Arizona oh! Cardinals. Oh! I think Javante Williams, if right. he is on the board there, um, even though they did sign James Conner, uh, you know, that, that was a cheap deal for, uh, they don't have a lot of capital. They would rather have Javante. And, uh, if he's, if he's there, if he can make it past, uh, according to how my draft is going past the jets, um, at 34, then I think they, they scoop him up. And I'm deviating a little bit here. This is, I think that, uh, Miami is going to want Javante. They're going to hope that he drops to their first pick in the second round. But nay, because the Atlanta Falcons are going to swoop in and draft him at pick 35. The pick ahead. Yes. Okay. I, I don't mind that. That's a pretty good call. They need a running back. They really do. And we expect them to take one, but it's more meaningful for the Mike Davis truthers out there if one of the top three goes to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. All right, wide receiver time. Let's start with Devonta Smith. Let's give the Heisman winner his due. Make him the first prediction of the day. I am going to Miami. I think Miami. Oh. I think Miami takes Devonta Smith at six, or I, I with do. their second pick. I think at six. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This this was the toughest one for me in the end because I I like him more than I think that some of the NFL teams like him. I I toyed with him going to Detroit at seven, um, and I've got him going to the Philadelphia Eagles, even though that would require both. J.C. Horn and Patrick Sertain being off the board by the time the twelfth pick comes, but that—that's how my mock draft fell. Yeah, it, it, I've seen Smith to the Eagles a lot. It makes a ton of sense. I'm going with a team. I don't know that I've seen anyone else mock him to. They found their franchise quarterback last year. They already have an alpha wide receiver. Why not give the young quarterback another weapon? I'm going with the Los Angeles Chargers. Wow, I have not seen that. No, I haven't, and yet your logic stands true, and they're sitting at 13, and um, there may be some temptations to trade back for them if someone wants to come up and get a wide receiver, but I, I don't mind that. Yeah, I mean, their defense is on point. Why not overpower that offense? Well, speaking of choosing offense instead of offensive line i have jamar chase <laughs> landing with the cincinnati Bengals. yeah me too <laughs> yeah me too oh do we all have yeah, that yeah, oh i yeah. thought that would be bold well yeah because they shouldn't they should they should draft so we all level. side with burrow just asking for his guy and them giving Haven't him. you seen the graphic of burrow throwing to yeah. jamar and he's just knocked down so we all think they should take sewell but they won't Correct. I don't, because I'm, Burrow I'm and Chase it. have a connection from LSU, and Burrow will get what he wants. And because it's hard to trust the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay. To 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 do what's right. All right, Waddle Waddle, Jalen Waddle Andy from Waddle Alabama, the way. Philadelphia, the Eagles. Okay. I've got okay. the Eagles taking Waddle at twelve. I think they would be super excited if he got to them. He won't, 
the Miami Dolphins early at six, scooping and getting that speed. Will Fuller and Jalen Waddle streaking all over the field. <laughs> all right. Yeah. yeah that's that's all right. an image. Uh, and because I have Devontae Smith going before the Arizona Cardinals pick in the first round, wide receiver is one of their great needs, and they have a need for some speed. They got Hopkins. You need a different type of player. I'm taking Jalen Waddle to the Cardinals. So the Cardinals just they they punt their horrible deficiencies at the cornerback position, and they go wide receiver, running back, according to Mike, the fantasy hitman. No, 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 Jason I've got, got the running back. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, that's right. No, um, and then we we threw two more wide receivers out there: Terrace Marshall Jr. and Elijah Moore. For Marshall Jr., I think he's one of the most talented players in this draft. I'm going with the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think Baltimore takes him. I I do as well. I'm oh. going with the Baltimore Ravens. They have two picks at the end of the first round, and so I know you were a lot surprised of, that we were the same. Uh, yes, I I know a lot of people are thinking that he won't. Be a first rounder because of some of the health issues, and that's where I'm it's going. Possible. That's where I'm going. I think that they, I think the the Ravens will grab Bateman at, at the back of the first, and I think that the medical concerns for Marshall will be real. And so then I was just trying to find it. it let's let's find an interesting spot, a team that really needs a playmaker on the offensive side of the football. I'm going with the Saints. So in the second round, or in the first? Uh, maybe in the third. Okay. I think that the I think teams are will be concerned about the medical stuff. And then Elijah Moore They shouldn't. Like Marshall's fine, but Elijah Moore, I went with the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, okay. At the uh yep. the back part of um the first round. I agree with the logic on Mike's previous pick. The Saints are in desperate need for another playmaker opposite Michael Thomas right now, and so I've got him going to the New Orleans Saints. And here's where things get a little wild because I am choosing to believe in the front office of Green Bay. Oh, it's never going to happen, Mike. <laughs> I know, I know, it's not going to happen. But I'm trying to will it. What to if happen. He, What if they just? This is the like the makeup year. What if they go? They go, Aaron. Every pick's a wide receiver. We're taking a wide receiver in every every pick of the entire draft. You choose who you want out there. Well, this will be a good start. I'm sending Elijah Moore to the Green Bay Packers. All right, the Green Bay Packers. And then our last prediction of the day: Kyle Pitts. Whom everybody... Oh, you can't send him to Atlanta. No, is that where you guys both sent him? Yes, sir. Yep. At least I did. Well, I did. so did I every did other too. mock draft in the land. Yeah. Miami. Okay, okay. Miami okay. would be thrilled with that. I, I believe that when they traded back to six, they wanted to get... Uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to figure out how you have that working. I believe that he, they would have to take him at six there. Which yes. means they'd have to get Devonta Smith at, at 18. At 18. Ooh. That's a tumble. Yeah. That's a tumble. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think Andy just realized he double booked Miami. <laughs> well, it's a lot easier to double book when we make every single prediction in white on the oh, board. I have I have made that mistake on yeah. this show a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, I remember that. No, I was feeling great when I saw Miami at 18, so we're good. Um, I should just pick Miami for all of the pass yeah. catchers, and then I get one right. They're going to get true. somebody. So tonight, the big day, the big draft. I cannot wait. There are 35 rookie profile articles up on the website. So if you want to review What's any of these players. What's the website, Andy? Uh, Thefantasyfootballers.com. It's a great URL. Yeah. It's also where you can get in on that uh, sweet, sweet ultimate draft kit promotion. You can win a listener league spot, ultimatedraftkit.com. And uh, you guys want to do a little bit of mailbag to close this a out? A little bit. Mailbag. Mailbag. All right. This is going to be fun. We have a voicemail question to kick off today's mailbag. If you have a question, you can go to thefantasyfootballers.com, click the submit a question button, or dial the voicemail hotline. That number is 302 464 TFFB. Let's jump in. Hey, ballers. This is Tim from Oklahoma, two time UDK owner and two time fantasy football champion Math checks for out for a two keeper league should <laughs> i keep acres deandre hopkins and jonathan taylor out of the three which two should i keep thanks love the show oh Ooh, man that's tough who you guys when oh. you did the first running back show i'm trying to remember which one of you had acres and which one of you had taylor higher 
Did you I both have Taylor higher? I think we all had Taylor higher. If, if I remember right, it was Taylor was at nine, and yes. Akers was ten or eleven. Yep, that is correct. But the so yeah. is there a place where is there a reason not to go running back, running back here? That's where the question comes to me: is do you take the sure thing of Hopkins, or do you, you know, reach for the stars and have potentially two difference making running backs? Yeah, we ju we just wrote an article based on a mock draft that our our staff did here. Um, and I was sitting uh, in the second round just trying to hope that Akers fell to me. He didn't, and then my backup was Hopkins. So I think that that says to me what I would do. I would I would take the running backs and throw Hopkins back. Is there anything to be said about uh, when you make these decisions? Because normally that's how we do it. We say, who would be there in the draft? Uh, is there anything to be said about positional flexibility as a logic point here, where Taylor and Hopkins means that you're not going to feel – locked or trapped into a position that where you know the draft in a keeper league some position could thin out extremely fast but you know if you end up with two running backs here you know you're drafting a wide receiver i think it's certainly something that you should think about when you're making your decision but at the same time then you could say what's another thing because it's keeper format age could be a factor and obviously the two young running backs uh project to have you know a, a great couple of years and the, the fact that rounds like three through seven are so wide receiver heavy, I, I think you're okay if you go both running backs. All right. Draft question from Aaron Miley says, what pick, if it happens, will result in the biggest of shimmies? <laughs> oh, man. The biggest of shimmies, uh, the pick I'm most excited to see happen. What do you want? Yeah, what does Jason Moore <sighs> – I mean, I assume it's Arizona-related. And how are you shimmy? Or is yeah. it fantasy related? Is well, it is it home run, you know, player to home run team? No, I mean I you know, I'm I'm going to shimmy for the for the Cardinals and that would be Devontae Smith falling to the Cardinals at 16. Would you shimmy with Jalen Waddle to the Cardinals? You know what's funny is Or is that uh, just a big shim? Not not as much. A little shimmy. It would be a little shim. I'd be like okay, I hit I <laughs> that's more of a shoulder shake, you know, like a yeah, yeah, like, like a like little a juke, juke move. Uh, it's so, not a. They're not little. They're not, but if Devonta Smith. Oh, then they're flapping in the wind, my man. The the loaves. <laughs> well, <laughs> something. That's right. Something's flapping. Something's flapping in the wind. I'm shimmying <laughs> big time. He's taking flight. Do you have a? Uh, you got a shimmy pick, Mike? Is it Najee <laughs> it's to the Cardinals? Najee's okay. Najee to Arizona. Honestly, I would be more excited about that, even though I think it's a worse pick. Like, if if they if they were to do that, <laughs> oh man. Did that's, you guys watch the interview of of uh, Najee Nate with, with Nate Burleson? I watched most of it. I watched all of it. It dude, was an unbelievable delight. Najee is just such a likable dude. Yeah. So is Benny Snow. <laughs> that's true. That's likable. Okay. It only goes so far. I've seen some really good running backs in my time where their interviews are not the best. Najee, I love this dude. And I hope he is the best running back to come out of this class because he is, according to my projections. But I don't put too much stock in in the interview process. The the worst part will be if like Arizona takes Travis Etienne when Najee's on the board, and so oh. they choose running back and they don't choose Najee, and then Mike is that's three deaths, which bring him back to life. Yes, that's true. The math checks out. All right. Uh, Instagram question from uh, IMJ Richter says, "Who is your Antonio Gibson in this draft?" One where, given the opportunity, they can be a late-round, league-winning type of pick. The one that jumps out to me right now is Terrace Marshall Jr. because he could drop, and he could be a meaningful rookie contributor based just on his physical talent ability, could land on a very good team. Uh, that seems like there's some potential there for me. What what made Gibson was the unexpected draft capital that was put into him. Yes. The fact that, oh my gosh, this was a, an early pick, a day two pick, that we were not expecting and he's a talented player. For me, that's Kenneth Gainwell. I don't expect it to okay. happen. I think Kenneth Gainwell is going to be a Theo Riddick type guy in the NFL, um, which is not But if the exciting. capital said, we think of you as more than that. Exactly. Someone invests a high second round, then I would go, I I'm in, because I think the talent is there if he gets the workload. Uh, I would say uh, Ramondre Stevenson is very interesting because I have no idea how an NFL team is going to value him and Chuba. Uh, Chuba Hubbard, like a couple years ago, was just so dominant. Not so much this year. but Well, then they were like, what if we just get in front of him yeah. and he can't run straight so fast? <laughs> Look, so just say, it, it, 
he could t- somehow turn into a third round pick. I'm not going to project that, but he would become much more interesting if he is. After now that since you, we didn't know each other's draft predictions before today, do you feel uh, equally as confident as you did when the day began that you will not end up on the back wall in a glamour shot? More, no, more. I feel way more. Yeah, confident. way more. Yeah, is that because of my picks? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> got it. All right. Um, but I, I get, I'm going to start making some notes for a glamour shot uh, wardrobe <laughs> out, uh, ideas. Okay, look, hey, we we get to see what happens tonight. Fields at four will change everything for you. You 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 win if Fields goes at four because then you got Pitts probably going to Miami. For what it's worth, Kyle Pitts doesn't think he's going at four. Don't know if you knew that. He he thinks that uh, he thinks there's four quarterbacks off the board. Well, to it, start the draft. There should be. If I was Atlanta, I'm taking Kyle Pitts. Would you, for it. If I was Atlanta and Justin Fields is on the uh, is 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 on the board, I am 100 percent taking him. I think that Arthur Blank has look, he, he owns the team, and Arthur Blank loves Matt Ryan and the, and just the contract situation of of Matt Ryan. There's nothing you can do with him for two years unless you're just willing to eat a absolute monster cap or or cap it which some teams are and maybe you could trade him but i think that they're you're saying they can't do anything with him at all for two full years or that or what about a year into it so actually i've i've heard from atlanta beat writers that they do have a way to get out after one year because the way that i looked at the contract seemed impossible Mm -hmm. um and i that's how i'm seeing and 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 really i think it is now but i i believe that there is methodology to be able to spread that second monstrous year over multiple years so you could get out after one year the next time you hear this podcast it's gonna be me oh yeah baby it will be jason you'll be a year older next time we record this show darn it every year (laughs) how did the uh the bright orange treat you today mr oh it treated me great i didn't i didn't kyle pitts out too much and uh i'm all right (laughs) All right, that'll do it. A reminder, those round one reactions are live stream Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. That's tomorrow. Join us on YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at The FF Ballers.